Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I am here with a very special guest, and her name is Edna. So here's Edna, yes. but you're going to have hello, to say your last hello. name because I will butcher it. So Edna Urquides. Urquides. I can't Urquides. roll my R's, so it doesn't work. It's okay. But it's okay. It's okay. But did I meet you like, would it have been a month ago now? That was it yeah. back in, or was it the end of August? So it was like early september September. okay but so that's what we're gonna be talking about today we're gonna be talking about um how we got to meet because of turning point faith and you're a part of that we're gonna be for those um who go to our church calvary you guys have probably heard us say it so many times talk about turning point faith and my dad he was so funny he's like mariah's the president of turning point faith and i'm like (laughs) dad you're making it sound like this really big thing but i mean it is a blessing but i'm like it's not like i i'm like dad i volunteered myself it wasn't like i was chosen (laughs) so that just clearing it up for everyone it's not as big of it but it is a blessing i'm thankful so i'll the president of turning point faith and there's Pastor Morgan that you guys all know. He's the VP, the vice president, which Morgan jokes that he's like, I feel like I don't really have to do anything as VP. So he's just chilling over there, which isn't true. We're going to put him to work, right, Edna? And then we have um, Andrea that you guys know. She works in the coffee bar. Andrea Lewis, she is the secretary. And then you guys all know Ryan Riley, the beach boy with the blonde hair. He does the sound and all that. You guys know Ryan. He um is the treasure so those are the people but we'll talk about all that but I want you guys to meet Edna so Edna can you just tell our listeners just a little bit first we'll get I want to get into your testament but share a little bit about what you do right now with Turning Point so it's your official role yes so I'm officially the desert territory faith representative for Turning Point Faith. And um, for those of you that don't really know what Turning Point Faith is, we're a new division of Turning Point USA. And so my job is to really just build a coalition and and community within the faith community to really get them civically engaged and really just protect our religious freedoms. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm doing that all over Arizona, all over Utah, southern idaho and southern new mexico so it's a fun territory and i'm having a great time yeah and you just show up eight hours to i don't even know what it's called what was the place uh for mojave mojave you go everywhere and so that's awesome but i want to hear a little bit about your testimony so we'll start off with where were you born I was born in Culiacán, Sinaloa, Mexico, which is, um, you know, it's a big, like right by the sea. It's -hmm. beautiful. Um, And, but I grew up in Hermosillo, in Hermosillo, Sonora. So I don't really know um, like Culiacán at all. Um, But then, yeah. And then I moved here um, to America when I was nine. I think I was nine, Mm -hmm. nine or eight. So awesome. So what was your upbringing like? What was that like? Were you in a Christian home or what did that look like for you? No, not at all. I, I always remember my grandma, my grandma was always into, you know, praying and like, um, yeah, she was just like, she's just a prayer warrior. And she would always tell me like, focus on school read books and pray to God. Mm. And, um, but my mom, especially like when I, once, once I moved here, like I didn't really grow up uh, knowing the Lord or anything like that. Um, but it was always in the back of my head because my grandma would always tell me to pray and like to focus on school. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I always thought about that. Yeah. And then what was that like um, in coming to America? Was that difficult transition? How was it, you know, being around other people and friends? Where did you have any um, difficulties or fitting in? What was that like? Oh, I remember it was, it's so funny. Um, because I was so afraid of going to school cause I only knew a few words. Mm-hmm. I remember I thought I was the coolest because I knew how to say the box, like <laughs> la, la caja. 
you say it's the box and I thought I was so cool because I knew uh-huh. knew that word but I obviously like I didn't have any friends and I moved here like right a second semester of second grade mm. and so I would always tell my teacher that I was sick so I would spend my days in the nurse's office crying because mm. I miss my grandparents I was so close with my grandma mm-hmm. and so um and so yeah it was definitely hard because I didn't know the language, mm-hmm. uh, but I slowly like learned it, and obviously I can speak it well now. Yes. But uh, but yeah, it was it was just hard like building friendships and not knowing um, the culture. But I remember telling my grandparents, like calling them, and I'm like, Grandma, like they have AC here, you know, like air conditioning, because mm. in Mexico you don't have that in schools, and like oh. Grandma, they have carpets here like the the classrooms where we have carpets and they give us free breakfast and like it it was just like a shocker to them because we don't we don't have that luxury in Mexico so it was like a big culture shock but super exciting to you know like get a different uh path Mm -hmm. um just different opportunities here than I would have it them have in Mexico yeah yeah and I was talking to someone and they were from a small um, tribe and I think it was Oaxaca or I don't know how to pronounce it but somewhere and he was saying how a lot of the even when he was when he came here a lot of even um, the other kids who came from Mexico they were weird with him and because they're from this small tribe and then he was saying but we need to all that to say he's like in America he's like you we have the opportunity to do or be whatever we want and there in Mexico, you don't really have that. So he was saying when people are trying to make America like Mexico, he's like, no, I don't want that. Because to say that, because um, I think he was saying someone was saying, oh, well, we got to you know, feel bad for them and all that stuff. He's like, no, I actually like that. I had to work hard for where I am. But with hard work in the Lord, he will get you there. So I think so many times we are just like, well, if only I had their life or I lived here or whatever, but I love it. We will be rewarded for whatever we went through. So actually I look at people who had like more difficult beginnings. It's like, you'll be probably blessed even more so because of what you're able to endure. And so I think it's just cool when people do come from other countries and, and just seeing them do it, even understanding that they can work hard and do all their work for the Lord. But Nowadays, it's just getting to the point where people like hate America and all that stuff. So what was your view as a young kid with like politics in America and just growing up? What was your view of America? Well, I always knew that my life was a trillion times better here Mm -hmm. in America, Mm -hmm. Uh, whether that's, you know, schools and like you said, through hard work. Yep anyone can really achieve the American dream, right? Like Mm -hmm. through hard work, I was able to get a full ride scholarship to a, to university, Mm -hmm. right? Like those are things that you don't get in other countries. And so, I mean, you do, but it's like, for example, in Mexico, like it's very easy to um, like stay stagnant. You have Mm -hmm. to uh, either have a lot of money, like your parents have to have a huge business. And so um, growing up, I just knew that I was very blessed to, um, you know, uh, live here and also have, you know, like my green card and then my citizenship. I, I finally got in in 2019. Mm-hmm. And so just being appreciative of that my life, my whole life. But with politics, I never cared about politics until probably la- last year, definitely. Wow. Like politics was not... I could care less like it was just not in my radar my grandpa would always be like hey and they're like are you interested I'm like no I don't even want to talk about it like don't (laughs) talk about it with me (laughs) so what got you into that then I mean obviously I kind of know the scare and everything but why did you start getting involved in more in politics I you know just started reading God's word a lot Mm -hmm. and I fell in love with this man named Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> no, really, like I, I fell in love with his word and and I started to realize that a lot of this world was building 
everything that they could against him. Yep. And um, and so then I started and obviously it was a election year 2020. And mm-hmm. so I said, I was like, this is the first time that I get to vote. If I'm going to vote, I'm, I'm going to be educated. So I started to look at both sides and I started to realize that, you know, one side tends to be more conservative. And I, I believe that, you know, conservative values is all over the Bible. Amen. And so just having that love for Jesus first and then really just voting my faith is what got me involved in politics and obviously like wanting to protect um, the word and making sure that as many people um, can hear the word of, 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 of God as, you know, as we can. And so, and so, yeah, that's how I got involved is yeah. just conservative values and really just living them out um, and protecting them. Amen. And so with everything with 2020, all the craziness, you know, being in quarantine and not being with people. Um, was there a point in your life too, where you're just sick of the world and you're kind of at the end of yourself with everything that happened that made you start reading your Bible? Like what was that turning point? I was going to say, what was that turning point (laughs) that really got you? Didn't even mean to do that. What was that thing that really got you to open up your Bible? What do you think that was? Well, it was definitely heartbreak and just feeling just so rejected and feeling so lonely and just like not good enough. Like, you know, just loving someone so much and having that person you love reject you and not love you back was definitely what got me to to read, you know, about Jesus, because I had been in the new age before Mm -hmm. and I I started to realize if I'm the problem, if I'm the issue, I can't be the solution, right? Like I can't be my own God. Like that's just nonsense. And so um, I started to, you know, just read and I was brand new to it. I didn't know anything. And so I like started from the very beginning, but then I got kind of lost. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, and so I started going to church a little bit, but then quarantine happened but I'm just so grateful for that time. I think we always talk about, you know, the the bad things about it, but quarantine allowed me to stay home. You know, I was working from home and anytime that I had, um, when I was not doing schoolwork or just work, I was reading my Bible and I wouldn't have had that opportunity if I was, you know, running around. And so, um, and so, yeah, like, yeah, just, yeah. I guess, yeah, heartbreak is what got me mm. into the the good news yeah and what were some could you explain to people like some even things in the world or new age practices or things did you do before that now reading the bible and going to church you're like wow this is against god's word this is not right yeah yeah i mean just even just the principle of the new age believe and you know the law of attraction you know basically saying that you're your own god that you have the ability to do X, Y, and Z, it's all complete, you know, just like just rooted in, 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 in evil, you know, yeah. that's what happened in the garden of even of Eden, yeah. the devil told Eve that he, she could be just like God. Yeah. And so, um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's all over the place. Witchcraft is promoted everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's really an issue that we, you know, have to really just battle, but um, but I have faith, you know, the word of God is, is so strong. And, um, it, it says in the Bible that he who lives in us is, is stronger and, and powerful than he who is in the world. Amen. And so, so yeah, oh, I love that. And I love that what you're saying too, because so many times people get to the end of themselves. Well, not even to themselves, but they have a heartbreak. They experience this stuff, but they don't go to God they get more bitter and they're like oh I can't believe you would do this to me but it's just so cool even like from the little things your mom your grandma said to you like read the like just like to trust in God and that is what really did bring you to understand that even though you think your fight can sometimes you're like people can blame God you realize that God isn't Mm -hmm. the one causing these things he's allowing them Mm -hmm. And so it really helps you understand that when these bad things happen, it's not our time to push away from God. What I love that, like you said, Romans 8, 28, God works all things together, even the craziness with quarantine and COVID. It really brought so many people like you and your story to come to Christ, to open up the Bible, to not just because right 
in America, we hear a lot about Jesus and there's a lot of stuff with the new age, but we don't actually know him. We don't actually read about Mm -hmm. him. So it's Mm -hmm. not until we can actually open up the word, which is his word and right what he's saying and actually hear him speak to us. So I'm just thankful that God brought you out of that. Important part of your story too is when you were talking about it was that breakup and the hardship in your in your story that brought you to the end of yourself to read the Bible and, and seek the Lord. But that's not true for a lot of people. They usually when they go a breakup, they get bitter and angry and run from God. But can you share some encouragement to women who maybe are going through a breakup or a man um what to do during that time? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, w- I was in a relationship for, for, for a few years. And so I kind of built my whole life on, on this person. Right. And so when, so when they, they left, um, it was very easy for me to just kind of like think that my life was over in a way. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, I, you know, at the beginning it was mm-hmm. hard. It was, um, it was, it was hard to, to find that forgiveness for that mm. person. Yeah. Um, and it really took it. And that's why I'm so grateful. And like, that's why I would, oh, I just, I just hope that, you know, anyone listening to this is, it feels encouraged that truly, like if I could sum up my testimony in a few words, it would be Jesus Christ heals the brokenhearted Amen. because, because he truly does. Like he knows what you're going through he knows what you're going through. He knows what you feel. And I remember when I was going through this hard time, I, I saw this like picture on Facebook out of all places. Mm -hmm. And it said like, um, it was a picture of Jesus. And it said like, uh, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but, but, but soon you will understand. Mm. And that's something that we have to go through. It's like, if we want to get to our God given, uh, destiny like we have to break things off that are not from God and so and so really just seeking his kingdom above all else is truly what gives us gives us joy and it's not like that happiness that just stays a few minutes or Mm -hmm. while you're with people but it's the joy it's like that everlasting joy and and satisfaction and purpose that the only the Lord can give you Mm -hmm. and so um and so yeah just I, I just hope that you know Oh, per anyone um, feels encouraged um, that the the Lord is just so good and so faithful, and He knows what you're going through, and um, don't ever doubt it. Mm, that's good, and I think it, like you said, um, I think it's Psalm thirty four eighteen, right, Trin? Trinity knows the little. We have a way of memorizing this verse, but it says, "The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and He sa- He saves those who are crushed in spirit." So. Whenever we're feeling brokenhearted, right, a breakup, <laughs> broken heart, um, he's close to us. But it's our choice, right? We have free will whether we're going to, like I was saying, we're going to go close to him or run away. Because there's a lot of times you see in breakups, people then start drinking or they start going to an, a ton of other relationships and then start, you know, having sex with all these people and then going on Tinder and like finding someone because they feel so lonely, yeah. And they think that's going to satisfy them, but it's just leading them to death. And Satan loves it. He loves when someone is broken and they can run to him, to Satan. But when we can run to the Lord in times of trouble, it says um, he will renew our strength. And that only can come through also reading the word. And that's what you did, right? You started reading the Bible. And when you started to get confused or not understand, then God pushed you to start going to church. So I just... Love how God's hand was just in your life. Like he knew yeah. that breakup was going to happen, but he knew that that's the very thing you needed to come to yeah. him and realize that I did a, a thing at um, Gospel Rescue Mission for the women once, and it was he, lowercase h, a guy isn't your savior. He, capital H, is. He's our savior. He loves us. Um, the yeah. Bible says the creator of the universe is your husband. So we had a podcast in the past with um, Tim Tim Brown. It was a couple um, podcasts ago. And he was talking about singleness. He was talking about how he was engaged. And his fiance just said, I don't love you anymore. Gave Gave him the ring and he never saw her again. So I'm like, he was just saying how broken he was. But yet he had to start 
it really got him to have a closer relationship with God, even for guys, yeah. right? Because we think girls are the only ones that hurt in breakups. Guys get hurt too. No, and some guys don't sure. care. But I think <laughs> that we just, this is our encouragement to all anyone who's been hurt or maybe even with a marriage, maybe your spouse left you. You know, it's not just people who are single. We're encouraging you to not run away from God, but run towards God. Spend time in the word. Even if you don't know where to start, I encourage you to read the Psalms or the Proverbs because okay. I used to read um, Psalms and think, oh, I have no enemies. Everyone loves me. But when I had my <laughs> breakup, I'm like, God, I feel like everyone <laughs> hates me. My life is awful. And I could relate to David. And I was just like, yeah. wow, like this is amazing. The The Bible is alive and active and the Lord oh, yeah. is near to us. He loves us. So that's an encouragement to anyone. Just Know that he is not a God that's far off. He is a God that is personal and he wants to speak to us through his word. So, yeah. And we also have each other. If you guys are going through anything, come to church and we'd love to pray for yeah. you. Like we need yes. the body of Christ. So um, can you share a little bit? Okay, so then you started going to church and then how did you hear about Turning Point? What was your uh, first time hearing about Turning Point? Maybe even share a little bit about church and um, why that's important and then how you got involved with Turning Point. You can talk about that. Conservative values. I had so many people that truly just didn't even know me. I literally just went to high school with them and um, they were just, you know, posting so many ugly things about me on all social media. And and so I guess people telling me that because I'm Hispanic, I can't think a certain way or mm. I can't vote a certain way was really what drove me to continue doing more research and really just find my why. Mm. And so I started attending the uh, chapter meetings at the ASU um, or Turning Point USA's uh, chapter at ASU. And, um, I've literally, you know, Kenna, mm -hmm. I've met, um, Julia, like those are just my best friends. And so, um, that's how I first got involved with, um, with turning point, but with church, once I started really just, you know, like in September, I really started just wanting to be with the Lord literally every day. I started to build a, a relationship and a community at church. And that's so important as well. You know, like that's why we're fighting for religious freedom so we can gather as the body of Christ and build that community that the Lord um, has made. And so it's so important to also like surround yourself with people, not only that are like-minded, but that have that same passion for the Lord. Because um, I think it's in Proverbs, it says like uh, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> and I think that a lot of people are now forsaking because, right, they um, saw, well, now people are going because last year, right, the church was shut down. And that's why I think it really woke up a lot of people and realizing, hey, strip clubs and bars are open, but they're ch shutting down the church. There must be a reason for this. Why? Because the government doesn't like it because it was supposed to be the church that was taking care of the widows and the orphans and the people that are hurting. But now the government wants to be this God and help everyone. And so when the church shut down, there was a lot of people hurting. And we started realizing how much the church is actually – I think when Charlie came to our church back in February, he was saying um, the church is like the la that's like the sleeping giant. And it's also the last thing that the left doesn't have. And so we can't let them take it. We can't let the right. government get into the church. And so when people we will talk about that later, I don't want to get too far into it. But that's where it's important. It says um, Hebrews ten twenty five to not forsake the fellowship or gathering of believers, especially um, as some are in the habit of doing, especially as the day of the Lord approaches. So as we see times getting worse, as we see things getting darker, people's flesh are going to want to bunker down, stay at home and not go out. But that's right. what the enemy wants. He wants you to isolate so he can speak lies to you and get you. And that's why there's strength in numbers, right? For anything, even with you see the Tower of Babel, like they were all in unity. So they're able to build it, which it wasn't a good thing and ended up was destroyed. But it's like, if anyone's in one accord, like there's power, there's strength in numbers. So 
um, Satan likes to divide and conquer. So we really need to, as believers, come together, right? The church isn't four walls. It's not just a building, right? It's a community of believers. So we, I, we were really thankful. So during that time, during COVID, we shut down for a little bit, not knowing what was really happening. But then right when we found out, okay, this is just putting a lot of fear and they're just, this isn't true. Like the stuff is showing like flu and cold, like the flu is worse and, and things like that. <laughs> not saying that it's not real. It's, we understand that it is intense. So we would do our best to, you know, sanitize and we weren't being dumb with things. We were cleaning everything and doing our best, but we understand how important it is to meet together because the suicide rate went up like crazy alcohol and then so many times um just even what was the other stat um pornography because people are alone at home there's just it was so it was the enemy like he was having to hate it like this was awesome for him so when you saw churches not standing up and speaking up that was that was scary like it was scary that churches were just complying like okay so it it was really cool, though, to see the churches like Pastor Jack Hibbs and then uh, Pastor Rob McCoy and then yeah. Charlie. That's we were we started a podcast during this time and then we we're able to have Charlie in our podcast. But that's actually where Charlie started. So we'll get into Turning Point Faith and all the questions yeah. people have with that. But that's how Charlie was like, that's why we need Turning Point Faith, because we're not just trying yeah. to turn people around away from their left views or whatever or liberal mindset to become a good old conservative we want also this to change them back to god because that's the only thing that our country was founded on was the constitution was on the bible so we need the church to stand up so i know i said a lot but that's how charlie kind of got into like starting turning point faith and i'll talk more about that charlie i respect him so much um he he actually it was really cool because he got um my dad connected to like all the other pastors and that's his whole um what he wants during this time too is so that the pastors that are like-minded that are standing up for freedom and not giving in to the things of the government and what they want to try to take us away from the bible and our freedom he's trying to bring them together so that they don't have to feel alone and isolated because that's again what satan likes to do so it's just yeah. cool now having Turning Point Faith in these churches to come together and say, hey, we're not only going to stand up for what, because um, I think the sad thing is there's a lot of woke churches, and Charlie talks about it. We don't have to get into that. I'll link down that video that Charlie does, but talking about a lot of woke churches where they think they're so awakened to help all these things, but they don't realize that these things are not biblical. Like this is actually dividing and then we'll talk about critical race theory and all that. Charlie's doing all that. <laughs> but I want to ask, how did you then get involved? So you're doing things with the Turning Point chapter. How did you get involved with Turning Point Faith and start working for them? So I was just really passionate about the chapter at ASU. So anytime that they were tabling on campus, um, I was like, I want to be there. I remember I showed up my first time and you know how we have all the pins mm-hmm. and you guys will, you guys will see them, but yeah. we have pins and stickers. I would literally wear like 30 pins because <laughs> I was just so excited about, you know, the movement. And I, I mean, obviously I was there with my best friend, so I had the best time. And so mm-hmm. I started going to, I went to their conference in the spring mm-hmm. and that's when I realized like, oh my God, like I really want to you know, work for Turning Point. Um, I was about to graduate from ASU, so um, so I was like, okay, let me just look at their careers page, you know, like mm-hmm. maybe there's something good. <laughs> and I see that there's a posting for a faith representative, and I was like, what is happening? Like, what is what is going on? And my friend Riley was like, yeah, they're starting a faith department. Like, you should apply. Like, you would be great for it. And so um, I was just like, oh, my goodness, like, I would love to, you know, be the faith representative. I didn't even know what that meant at the time. Mm -hmm. But just like my love for for the Lord and then my love for freedom and and faith and and turning point, like it was just all in one. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord just made it so easy and just so fun. The interview process, 
um, with my manager, Austin, like great time. And, um, and so that's really how I, I would literally just look at their career page and applied. (laughs) I love that. And so that was started back in August, right? Was it like the beginning or end of August? And I think it's awesome because so how we got involved was, um, in the beginning of August is when my dad, he was like, he got sick. And so he has oxygen dropped to 64. You guys all know. So he was in the hospital, but it was crazy because, um, Charlie texted my dad and he's like, Hey, you need to get involved with turning point faith. Cause my dad before this was talking to Charlie about starting something like this, where how can we get the pastors together to do something like this? And, um, and my dad was saying, because if one of the pastors is like struggling with something or standing up for just normal things we stand up, we're not just trying to be gung ho and just pick a fight, just the normal freedoms we have. We need to have other pastors either just praying or supporting or knowing, hey, bro, we got your back. And so my dad was saying something about that. And then it was cool because that's when Charlie then started the Freedom Square and did that. But yeah. now the fact that they actually have Turning Point Faith and we'll explain a little bit more of what that is. So he basically texted my dad. My dad forwarded it to me because my dad was in the hospital. So we couldn't be with him because he tested positive for COVID and all this stuff. So then um, I I think it was I reached out to one of the guys that he told me to and didn't get a hold of him. But then I just signed up. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I just like signed up. And then I got an email from you, Edna. And all of a sudden (laughs) you're like, yeah, let's schedule like a time to meet. And I was like, oh, yeah, Thursday at 2, whatever will work for me. And all of a sudden it was Thursday. And I think you said like, oh, I'm coming. And I didn't think you would come because you live in (laughs) Phoenix. So I'm like, this girl's not going to come, you know, because I thought it was just going to be like a FaceTime or Zoom or something. And you drive all the way from Phoenix to, like, meet me in person. And I was just so shocked. First of all, I wasn't ready. You were all dressed nice and fancy. And I'm just, like, wearing (laughs) who knows what, just comfy clothes and a hat. But it was just so cool because right when I met you, I just saw the joy of the Lord. And that was your strength. I just thought you were so much older. You're only, right, 22 or 23? 22. 22. I'm about to turn 23. Okay. Yeah. So I thought you were like so much older than me even just how mature you were and how you presented yourself. And it was just so cool. I feel like we connected because of the Holy Spirit in us. And it it like it just us sharing our stories and talking, going back and forth and talking about even like moving in the gifts and like just different things where I'm like, this girl is so cool because she loves God. And it wasn't because, oh, this girl's just good old, like, I'm a conservative and I'm into politics. No, like, it was clear that you're in this stuff because you care. Why? Because the Bible says you're not just, oh, I'm just going to be a part of this stuff so I can get a lot of followers or stuff. It's like, no, it's because you care about these causes and what's happening. And I think that was very evident. And that's where then I even felt. Like I already, we already love Charlie and Erica because they're awesome. Yeah. And Charlie's the type of person who's the busiest person in the world. But if my dad were to text him right now, he'd respond in five minutes. So yeah. if that doesn't say anything about Turning Point, like they are, the cool thing too is the president of, or the founder, Charlie, he loves God. Like he has a relationship with God. He's a Christian and, and, um, his pastor is Pastor Rama Coy, And then you guys all know Pastor Jack Hibbs. Um, he's does a lot with him and then we've had pastor James Cadiz he's part of that and then we've had Seth Gruber come to our church and speak with like the pro-life and has his podcast unaborted he's part of that so it's just so cool to see um, what Turning Point Faith is about because it's showing that we can't just have the schools and those things stand up which is amazing and we're happy like for the chapters but we need the church to stand up and stop giving in to the things of like the government and like, okay, we have to just comply. Um, But to really stand up, like we did a podcast, I won't get into it, but the black robe regiment, how the pastors were the ones who were speaking up against these things. He had two muskets on his pulpit ready to fight and he gathered 300 men and they went to go fight. So We're not saying this stuff to like, let's get your guns and fight. We're saying just these basic things to use your voice 
right? The First yeah. Amendment, like freedom of speech. Like, I think that these simple things is just we're just letting them go away. We let the we let the Bible get out of the schools. We are, are letting all this stuff indoctrinate our children because we were afraid to speak up. But anyway, I talked a lot. So I want to hear your viewpoint about it. So what is it like, you know, emailing these people and then going to their church and meeting them for the first time? Like, what does that look like for you? Is it something that comes natural for you? Or what is that like um, starting Turning Point Faith and doing that? Side note, I did want to say, like, I'm so grateful that I drove down to Tucson and met with you because we had such a great conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I even cried at one point (laughs) and um, you you prayed for me. And um, I remember coming home and I was just I felt so encouraged to Mm -hmm. continue reading my word, the word and continue building a relationship. And so um, that I just wanted to honor you really quick. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, you know, just. Um, reaching out to pastors, we're seeing that it's really the smaller churches that are very passionate and willing to stand up for freedom um, and that are not afraid of offending people. And, um, you know, and, and like like you said, um, it was the pastors that were out there fighting for freedom, right? Yeah. Like it was them that, that were standing up. And now we have pastors and I don't want, you know, I don't want to be rude, but really just pastors that don't even stand up for life in the womb. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, or, or biblical marriage, uh, or a God given identity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with turning point faith, we always say that Liberty is God's idea, not man's idea. And so really embodying that as an organization in as representatives of the organization is truly what's going to change the trajectory of our nation. Amen. And, um, you know, just encouraging pastors that, you know, like we're, we're with you, we're for you and, you know, coming to them with a servant's heart yeah. and it's, it's fun, like getting to talk to so many people, um, every day, um, and like meeting with pastors. I, I don't think, I don't, it's not really intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just a great way to talk to them about Jesus and like learning from them, you know, like yeah. what they know about the word. And so I literally have the best time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so it, it's, it's, it's definitely like a slow process yeah. of building relationships and telling people our mission and, and really getting to know them and building that, you know, relationship. Um, but we're so excited and, um, we know that it's going to like a good relationship doesn't just happen overnight. Right. Yeah. So, um, except for you so, yeah, and me, that, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just that, was that was only God. God. That was the Lord. That was the Lord. And so, and so, yeah. Yeah. And I, and so now just getting people comfortable with knowing, so this podcast will come out on Tuesday. So we would have already had our Sunday service where Edna's going to be there. So you guys hopefully all can meet her to do the voter registration both services the 9 a.m and 11 a.m so if you didn't do that this sunday um then we'll have another one coming up and do more events but um we would have had already had our meeting so hopefully guys we're all there but if you're not that's why you're watching (laughs) the video now so we'll kind of inform you but come to our next meeting there was free pizza i'm sure it was a blast so Make sure yes. that you guys join our <laughs> next meeting to get involved with Turning Point Faith because it's not just oh, we're part of Turning Point Faith to just say this label or whatever. It's when we go to the school boards. You guys will know when we're going to the school board meetings at Amphi mm-hmm. on Tuesdays. When we stand at Planned Parenthood and pray, you guys will be informed. When we have events like when we go to hopefully in November, right, for the critical yeah. race um what is it called? Critical Race Theory Tour with Charlie? Um, critical, yeah, it's the Critical Racism, Racism. Tour with Charlie at uh, U of A. Yeah. So that event, you guys can come with us. America Fest, right? Uh, is that yeah. called America Fest? Yeah. That in, in December, I think it's December 18th. You guys can come with us. When we, um, we also want to do more things too to encourage just people even to bring them to church. So we might have like a night of worship at the park 
a voter registration. You guys will have the tabling, which is you'll see it on Sunday. Um, you would have already seen it. Hopefully you got your stickers and buttons and things. Pins. But um, <laughs> your pins. But you'll see all <laughs> these things that to stand for, to vote, to pray, um, to God over government. Um, what are some of the other things? I haven't seen them, but what are some of the yeah, things? Yeah, we're like – pro um school choice Mm -hmm. but also really big is you know restore the family and bringing attention to that families need fathers and um really just protecting our children yeah amen and that is the key thing with everything that's why we encourage people when you come to church like bring your whole family like it needs to be the fathers that are the ones like let's go to church shouldn't it be the moms that are like come on honey get out of bed let's go We need the dads (laughs) to stand up like, come on, kids, we're going to church. Like, let's do this. And so I think this is just an encouragement to all of us. It's not just encouragement to those in the left. It's awakening us too to get excited that this isn't, again, I'm going to say it so many times. So I'm blue in the face. This isn't things we're making up. The Bible talks about this. The Bible talks about submission and headship, how the man is to be over the woman, but not out of like being a dictator. We're all equal right but we have different roles yeah. and then it's also Correct. understanding the pro-life like um proverbs 31 8 to defend those who are being crushed right to stand up for those who like don't have a voice um just read psalm 139 and i can't imagine people who say that oh life doesn't start till after it's like no moment of con- conception that's when life starts even scientists can't deny that they know that's true but anyway also um when we talk about the things with the school boards, it's not just random things. The Bible talks about not being a wicked, lazy servant. And also it says in Ezekiel 33, 3, if you see the enemy coming and you don't warn the people, their blood will be on your head. So we see a lot of people like, oh, someone else will do it or it's fine. It's going to get bad anyway. The Bible talks about those who are um lazy sir i think it's in matthew 25 but you wicked lazy servant no none of us want to hear that you want to hear well done my good and faithful servant so you might be persecuted and we're guaranteed suffering we're guaranteed hardship but that's why we need each other because right when there's pain we're going to go through pain but we need each other that's the best way to get through these things is not alone but with one another so we can be praying for one another so that if you want to start something um Maybe I know some of our youth group kids want to start a chapter. You can contact or get involved um, with Turning Point Faith here, and Edna will get you with Kenna, and she'll help you with getting a chapter at your school. If you guys want to start going to school board meetings with the Marana School District, you guys can start that. If you find like you want to go to a soup kitchen or somewhere that we can serve, we have our Turning Point Faith group where we can all go there. So, And if you're going through something where – You're like, oh my goodness, I want to go to the school board meeting and say something, but I don't know what to say. I need some resources. I will email Edna and she'll give us resources and things. There's also, Charlie was saying there's going to be webinars and like different things that will help us with resources because as Christians, when we look at the stuff that's going on, the politics, and even we're hearing stats of most people even on Fox are now not conservative. So we're just so confused, like what is true? But the cool thing is what Turning Point Faith is doing is they're getting all the things together and they're filtering through that stuff too to give us like the information. Because as pastors and leaders, sometimes we don't have time to know what's going on. But the cool thing is like what Charlie and his team is doing is they're helping us understand and to be educated. So right, right. even things with the vaccine, we have a vaccine exemption. So if anyone wants to come to the church and get a paper my dad pastor craig will sign it and the cool thing is it's worked for everyone except sadly for military but it's worked and we don't know how long that will but we're supposed to do our duty for now to right do our best right even to vote that's why we get it says 50 percent of evangelicals are registered to vote which is ridiculous we should have way more and only 50 of them or half of them are voting so think if we would all actually register and then like my dad said on Sunday um they said unless Jesus is on the ballot you're always voting for the lesser of two evils so you just need to vote for not a person but a policy if they're pro-life if they're standing up for um 
just even how the family should be in the nuclear family and also uh, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, um, the Second Amendment, right? All these things are so important because these freedoms come to us from the Bible. But just do your part and right, do your part, vote, and the results are up to God. I know I said a lot, but is there anything else that you would like to say with some maybe events or things that could be coming up or that we could start or just encouragement of like why someone from our church should get involved with Turning Point Faith? Yeah, no. So the chapter that we are starting with you, the president, (laughs) yeah, um, uh, we're really just looking forward to being the hands and feet of the church yeah. at community events, right? Like you said, like holding a worship night at the park, we might reach people that have never really yeah. heard about Jesus before, right? And so um, being out there, like getting them registered to vote, getting them signed up to attend more faith, um, you know, Turning Point Faith events is really just something that we're so excited about. So mm-hmm. if you didn't come to our meeting on Sunday, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Don't cry. Don't I'm just cry. kidding. You missed <laughs> out, but. <laughs> yeah, we have a monthly, we're going to have a monthly meeting. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, come to the meeting in November. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure we'll have more free pizza. Yes. <laughs> but, but yeah, we're just super excited and we're so grateful. Yeah. And I'm thankful for you, Edna, with all your hard work. And it's it's so hard because you're doing all this work, right? And sometimes we're like, ah, oh, like, because, right, you've probably had a, have a lot of negative experience, too, of people, like, not really responding well or trying to reach out to churches. And they're like, whoa, whoa, I don't want to get involved with this. Because they think separation of church and state, people have it all wrong. They think that means that we shouldn't be involved with any of that. It's actually false. That was to keep the government out of the church it's we the people right they are not the sovereign like they think they are right god is in control and even when the bible says i'm gonna link this in the description below but when charlie jack hit pastor jack hibbs pastor rob mccoy when they're talking about turning point faith and why they started it they talk about the verse too of people say oh but the bible says like rent to caesar give to caesar what is caesar's and god what is god so we just can't do anything like they're doing their own thing The whole point of that and every Western mindset, which is us, we won't understand. We think that means we can't be a part of that. But Jewish mindset understood what he was saying and what he meant when he was holding that coin is that all of these people are under God. And right, we even say that in this quote here, Ronald Reagan, it says, if we ever forget that one, we are one nation under God, we will be a nation gone under. And we know one day, right, America is not going to last forever but we as faithful servants to Christ need to do our part. And we're not going to just give get give up when things get tough. We're not going to step out of the fight because to the day we die, it says to fight the good fight, finish the race. And then it says, then you get your reward. Now lays up for me a crown of righteousness. And it's not just a crown that we get to boast in ourselves. It's to lay at God's feet. Like, God, I only did these things. My flesh wanted to get the glory, but I really didn't. But I'm doing this because I want to serve you, right? I want to glorify you with my life. And I don't want to be a coward. And a coward, it talks about in Revelation, will be in the lake of fire. So we always look at, oh, it's only for sinful people, but it talks about the cowards, the people that aren't willing to stand up when they knew something was happening, right? They even said that in the time with Hitler, people knew stuff was happening and they could have done something, but they were too afraid. But we can't be looking down at them and like, oh, I can't believe they didn't do anything when they knew this was happening in concentration camps. Us not letting the church, not shutting our churches down and people not doing that. And when we're letting them control our children in the school and all these things and teaching them this disgusting thing with sex and they're teaching young children that, oh, you, if you want to be If you're a boy, but you want to be a girl, you can do this. If you want to like this, they're teaching kids. They're over-sexualizing them. And it's the church that is supposed to be teaching these kids um, what that sex is supposed to be in marriage. And your body is exactly how God created you when you were born, right? Right. He didn't create Adam and Steve. It was Adam and Eve. He created it for (laughs) a reason from creation, right, in the beginning, So there's all these things and I get really passionate about it, not because 
I love politics, it's because I love the Bible. I love the word yeah. of God because that's the only thing that will last, right? Politicians, all these things will fade away. Even the quote unquote constitution maybe, but the thing that will stand is because the Bible and those things were rooted on, or these things were rooted in the word of God, which it says um, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our, but the word of our God will stand forever. Isaiah for 40 verse eight. So we need to remember that is like, we're on the winning team as Christians. We know how it's going to end. We know that Satan is conquered and Jesus is Lord, but until that day we need to be directing as many people to the truth to the yeah. bible to a relationship with jesus christ so if you don't know the lord and you're just on this video we encourage you guys to maybe go to a church a bible believing church you're always welcome to our church calvary River valley we also um encourage you guys to maybe get a bible um you can get i always use esv you also can get like nlt for new times or nasb any of those niv and just start reading the gospel of john just start reading it and asking and just be willing for truth say god help me be willing and i encourage you guys to come to church come to um, our church you're more than welcome to come and we love you guys so much and edna do you have any other resources or closing thoughts for our listeners Like we were speaking earlier, like or we, we were saying earlier, is like Jesus has called us to be the salt and light of the world, Amen. right? And and um, I have it pulled up here, but it says in Matthew five that it says no one. And this is Matthew five fifteen. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Amen. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Amen. And so, the world is so bold about, you know, coming for our children, coming for our God-given identities, mm -hmm. life in the womb. And yeah. as the church, we should be the, we have Jesus, like mm -hmm. Jesus lives in us. And so we should be the most outspoken about things and people that are so against God. And so, um, and so, yeah, we're, we're just really excited. Um, and yeah, come to our next chapter meeting. Um, or talk to Mariah yes. if you want to get involved. Yeah, come to me. You can also email me at calvaryov at calvaryov.org. You can also call the church 520-229-1200 and just come up to me. I'm the girl with long hair at church. So just come up to me. Talk oh, to me how to get yeah, long hair. How <laughs> to get involved in the other I think you kind of said this verse, but it says, um, let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven so that's the whole thing that we're trying to do is so that others will glorify god and say god is good not oh this person is good or that person's awesome mariah and edna are awesome no we want to decrease and say it's not about us and that's what i see with you edna what you're doing is you're really serving every time i have a question or something you find it and you get it and you get a resource and so i just know that god will bless you for that if not here on this life we want it in eternity, right? Because that's lasting forever. So encouragement yeah. for all you guys. Keep going. Fight the good fight. Finish the race. And you have each, we have each other. So don't do it alone. If you guys need help with anything, get involved with Turning Point Faith at our church. And we're excited for what's to come. But I think that's it. But if you guys would like to um, listen to us on, you can listen to us on Spotify or iTunes, you guys can do that. Leave us a five-star review. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. And also, you can follow us on Instagram. We have our, I think it's like on Instagram at, is it Turning Point Faith Calvary? I made it really long, but it'll be in the description below. Follow that Instagram. Um, we also obviously have our Calvary Conversations Instagram. You can find the behind the scenes, but think you're subscribed you're following that but follow our turning point faith instagram so you can get all the events we're doing and how to get plugged in and um also thank you so much to our sponsors mission heating and cooling it's getting colder out there so if you need heating go check them out in the description below and i think that's it but edna thanks again for joining us it's been such a blessing thank and you. i'm so thankful for you thank you i love you bye